This is the third in a series about consuming services on Windows Phone. Previously, we covered the web client and HTTP web request class for pulling data. Today, we're going to take a look at parsing the return XML using link to SQL. So at this point, we've presumably worked through the previous videos and figured out how to get data from the web onto the phone using HTTP web request or web client. Now, how can we make something useful out of that data? We're going to use some Yahoo Web APIs to supply some data. Why Yahoo? Well, I'm an unabashed Microsoft fanboy, so this hopefully adds some legitimacy to the data pool. Note this is a deprecated API and has been replaced by the new Places Yahoo API. Also note uh, we're using a sample API key. If you want to use this in your own production systems, go get your own Yahoo license key. They're free. Note the API is limited to 5,000 hits per day. Read the licensing doc available from Yahoo. Details are available available at developer.yahoo.com, WAC maps, WAC rest, v1, geocode.html. Let's take a look at using link to XML and HTTP web request to process some data and see how to parse it out. First, we're going to take a look at some Yahoo APIs. First, we've got this uh, query where we're passing in a street a city and a state. Uh, I'm expecting to get a single result back from this. We come over here, we'll pop it into our browser, and we can see that we get a single latitude and longitude point. Now if we come out here and view source on this, we can see it's basically just a big bundle of XML coming in over the wire. Let's take a look at our second query string. Come over here, copy, draw, paste in and here we're handing in a single city and that's it we passed in a city of Covington actually grew up in near Covington Georgia so thought that would make an interesting query here we can see a lot of results piling in various cities there's Covington Georgia Covington Indiana Covington Kentucky etc if we go out there and we look at the source on that a bunch of latitude and longitude flying around uh, a bunch of results. We've got to pull those into individual results. So let's go off and we'll take a look. Uh, first, this is the program that we're going to run. Um, this is our geocode Yahoo entry form. In the first instance, we're querying against a single address. Uh, so we can come in and we'll go off and uh, we'll execute and we get back a single point of return. If we set it over so we're just querying on Covington and we execute, we get a number of results back that are for Covington. So what does this code look like? Again, nothing special in the UI layer, no cute data bindings or anything like that. Most of this is driven uh, very strictly behind the scenes by the code. And we can come down here and uh, one of the first things that we do is when the button's clicked we issue our HTTP web request. We're not going to go into that, we've covered that in another video. Uh, the request comes back, we parse it. Again, we covered this in another video. A uh, key thing here is parse results. So we call out, instead of writing a text block like we did before, we call over to parse results. Parse results comes in, and the first thing we do is create an X document off of the results. Then we're going to use a link to SQL statement to go off and we're going to query, use a link to SQL to query this. So we can come in and uh, what we do is use link to SQL to query in a collection, an enumerable collection of geocode result. If we go to the definition of geocode result, we can basically see a bunch of public fields here that roughly correspond to the XML that we were seeing. Uh, and then straight up link to SQL, we go off and for instance we say latitude is equal to the result elements uh, that matches latitude. We're using an X name in there because the Yahoo uh, results actually come in with an XML namespace of URN Yahoo Maps and then we pull the value off that that goes into geocode result dot latitude and then that works out across the whole set. After that what we've got is a our enumerable collection of geocode result makes it very easy to come down and say hey for each geocode result Geocode and geocodes, iterate out, push them out to the screen. Um, I just wrote this little T diag format uh, method that basically builds up a little string so I can dump it out uh, without messing around with it. But again, very straight up, very uh, very easy to do once you see it in action. 
uh, this is how you use link to XML to parse a web return set off of a strongly defined type like geocode result here. One key concept we noted was the use of X document. Again, we used X document to parse an XML string into a format or document structure that we can then query with link to XML. Very core to the process of being able to parse this stuff and pull the individual bits out. Another key concept was the use of strongly typed classes to give us a strong structure to our query results. We wanted to create an ienumerable collection of geocode results that we could query against using proper names and, and class fields and stuff like that. So here's the structure of that geo, geocode class that we're using as the basis uh, for our ienumerable collection. Linked XML is a magic that lets us pull apart all that XML data without, without having to resort to XPath or XQuery, which I'm not a huge fan of. We pull the data into instances of the geocode result we talked about previously, our strongly typed class. A download of the code from this demo is available at http whack whack www.devfish.net whack downloads whack files whack wp7 garage2.zip. Keep a watch out for the next session. We'll cover the basics of RSS and Atom syndication format consumption on Windows Phone 7. Thanks for listening. My name's Joe Healy. My Twitter's at DevFish, and I hope to see some great Windows Phone 7 apps out of you soon.